Are you kidding me? Nothing gets past my bow. With enough fuel and air, everything burns. Prepare for liberation. The spirits of the forest awaken. It's going to rain hard today. Rules are made to be broken. <laughs> what is your will? It's squashing time! Embrace the sun! Admiral on deck. Ready to fly. My blades are legendary! I am both here and everywhere. The store is open! Let's get right into it. Heroes are a special type of monkey. Each hero provides their own specialized skills that are cheaper and more effective than regular monkeys. They each play a specific role in your lineup and come with their own strengths and weaknesses to play around. Do you need a big monkey that slaps balloons and shouts at other monkeys to make them work harder? There's a hero for that. Do you need a hacker that can produce money, downgrade your competition and commit tax fraud all in one round? There is a hero for that. Or do you need a pyromaniac that commits several war crimes just for the shits and giggles? Surprisingly, there's a hero for that. While BTD6 has a wild cast of heroes, what's better than starting with the two beginner towers, Quincy and Sorter? Just a disclaimer before I start, I'll be looking specifically at heroes themselves, so most general hero things like monkey knowledge, leveling, and co-op hero interactions will be covered in other videos. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Pride, Strength, and Intelligence. All traits of powerful archers across the Balloons universe. That aren't named Quincy. Oh, come on! Jokes aside, Quincy is BTD6's resident tutorial hero. He is the first hero any player unlocks, and he is used to teach every player the fundamentals of the game. But compare him to other heroes, and you slowly realise he's more of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none hero that can be purchased at the start of every game, but half cash. In his base level 1 form, Quincy fires bouncing arrows that can hit up to three targets. Nice, but not in any way groundbreaking. From there, most of Quincy's upgrades improve on his base attack, but there is an occasional ability and explosive arrow upgrade. Hold on, pause. I originally recorded this section reading out practically every upgrade, but that didn't sound good, so I'm only going to be talking about the big upgrades here. Everyone on the same page? Okay, let's get right back into it. At level 3, Quincy gains his first ability, Rapid Shot. It essentially gives Quincy a dose of speed juice and triples his fire rate for a short burst. Pretty good for mowing down clumps of balloons, but its duration being tied to Quincy's level hurts its usefulness during early game. Moving on, level 5 and 6 gives Quincy camera detection and doubles his arrows. And at level 7, Quincy starts firing explosive arrows every third shot. While they technically can pop lead, I wouldn't count on them, even with rapid shot. Their main use is against Moabs, since the explosions benefit from Quincy's Moab damage bonuses. Level 10 adds Quincy's Storm of Arrows ability. It's essentially a Clash Royale Arrows spell, but the number of times it hits one target is random. <laughs> Its bonus to Moabs does help it out a lot during late game, but its long cooldown and limited range holds it back from being a good hero ability. Level 15 and 18 improves ability cooldowns and overall damage, and level 20 unceremoniously increases Quincy's base attack speed and damage of Storm of Arrows ability. Pretty disappointing compared to most other level 20s. Now with all that hero knowledge in your noggin, Nice. I'm going to share with you some tips for using Quincy in-game. Firstly, Top Path Alchemist pairs really well with Quincy. His arrows only deal 1 damage, so giving him a Berserker Brew or Stronger Stimulant practically doubles his damage output. Also, if you're planning to go late game with Quincy, I suggest setting him to Strong and purchasing a dedicated Ceramic Cleanup Tower. 
His Moab damage bonus is best used against Moabs. And Quincy isn't really good against Super Ceramics unbuffed. And for the wacky Quincy enjoyers out there, I suggest pairing him with an Overclock, Call to Arms Village, and Glue Storm to essentially turn his Rapid Fire ability into a Death Ray. Rest in peace, bad. Performance aside, Quincy also has some strong cosmetics that add a lot to his character. Quincy's skins are quite good, despite one of them being an obvious Metal Gear Rising reference. My only nitpicks are the overuse of white on the later Cyber Quincy levels, and Quincy's voice lines being annoying in general. Oh, come on! But that is just my opinion, though, so take that with a grain of salt. Data Quincy certainly exists, but the placement effects for OG and Cyber Quincy look really good. But to be honest, it would be nice if Cyber Quincy got a knockoff Blade Wolf pet. Anyways, what is my final verdict on Quincy? Well, he's an okay hero at best. His base DPS is a remarkable by any means, but he scales well with buffs and has decent late game potential. However, his weak level 10 and lack of lead popping power does hold him back from being one of the better heroes. You again. Oh boy. Can it. Anyways, this video can't be a beginner's hero guide without mentioning BTD's Swordmaster, Sorter. While unlocked a lot later than Quincy, Sorter is unanimously associated as a beginner's best friend, since she is easy to pick up and consistently solo the early rounds of most maps. Not that I have any personal experience whatsoever. From level 1, Sorter shreds nearby balloons with their dual swords, while also having inbuilt camo detection and a plus 1 damage bonus to ceramics and moabs. Level 3 introduces Sorter's first ability, Leaping Sword. Leaping. Uh, Sorter is doing it again, isn't she? It on me. Leaping sword. Okay, she is back. As you might have seen, there are two parts to this ability. The impact, and the leftover swords. The impact does 20 damage, or 100 to moabs, which is enough to one-shot ceramics and deal decent damage to basic moabs. Meanwhile, the leftover swords act similarly to the druid's brambles and deal 2 damage to 5 nearby balloons that happen to run over them. However, the Lingering Sword's uptime is calculated the same way as Quincy's Rapid Shot, so you have to wait a bit before they can take out large groups of balloons. Both the Impact and Leftover Swords can pop lead and frozen balloons, but hold your horses, that doesn't mean you can skip any lead popping power. The ability has enough uptime to clear round 28, but from round 30 onwards you'll need some kind of lead popping power. I know I said a lot for a small level 3 ability, but trust me bro, you shouldn't underestimate the power of Leaping Sword. Level 7 introduces the first of Sword's damage bonuses, but I'm going to cover them all in bulk for the sake of clarity. After doing some digging, I found that the level 7 and 11 bonuses are nearly identical. They provide plus 2 damage to balloons, and plus 10 to moabs, along with similar bonuses to our abilities. The main difference is that level 7 applies to stunned balloons, while level 11 applies to harmed balloons. Stunned means that the balloon is locked in place and has stars flying over its head, while harmed means that the balloon or blimp is experiencing some form of slowdown or damage over time effect. Level 7 also allows Sorter to pop frozen balloons, but who cares? Meanwhile, level 19 provides another plus 2 damage to balloons and plus 10 to moabs that have regrow, fortified, and or camo properties. Just bear in mind that it doesn't stack, so a camo regrow fortified ceramic gets the same bonus as a fortified ceramic. Okay, damage bonus side tangent over. Level 9 adds a bit more damage and introduces the balloon bleed damage over time effect. 
pretty neat for finishing off stragglers, but it doesn't trigger any of Sorter's damage bonuses for obvious balance reasons. <laughs> Level 10 adds Sorter's Sword Charge ability. It can pretty much be summed up as generic Scream Wipe ability number 543, but Sorter duplicates herself for every lane a map has. These duplicates have the same stats as the original, so balloons trapped over overlapping sections don't really have a great time. Level 13 enchants Sorter's Blades, giving them plus 1 damage and lead popping power. And at level 20, both of Sorter's abilities gain insane amounts of damage, and Sword Charge clears the map 3 times instead of 1. Jeez, Sorter has a lot of complicated upgrades for a hero that is dead easy to use. But I have a few tips and tricks to maximise Sorter's abilities. Firstly, Leaping Sword. While I do admit my main use of it is on leaking balloons, the later levels boost its damage a lot, so you can often get some good early damage if you spam the ability at the start of each round. Also, if you time the ability just right, you can perform the most satisfying ceramic one-shot in the game. Next, Sword Charge. Again, I only use this if I'm leaking a lot of ceramics, but I use it in tandem with Leaping Sword to clear 63, 76, and 78 with ease. But for 63, I suggest setting Sword to Strong and alternating between Leaping Sword, Sword Charge, and Leaping Sword again to clear each wave. While Sword pairs well with most towers, Sword plus Relentless Glue is a match made in heaven. Not only Relentless Glue is an amazing stalling tower in its current state, but it's one of the few towers that triggers both Sorter's level 7 and level 11 damage bonuses, while also being cheap and easy to use. I am sure there are plenty more tips and interactions I have glossed over, but for the sake of length, I'll leave it there. Finally, we have Sorter's Cosmetics. Viking Sorter brings Sorter back to the simple times, where pillaging and popping colonies of balloons was a way of life, rather than a form of self-defense. And Jiangxi Sorter is an edgy ghost that enjoys dragon balloons six feet under. I hunger. Gee, she sounds fun at parties. And the only trophy store item is this crane that certainly has seen some things. Although Sorter may seem like a simple noob hero on the surface, she does require some skill and game knowledge to make full use of her abilities and damage bonuses. Solid hero to use on most maps, but her reliability decreases when played on maps with multiple paths or limited trackside space. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my first video on heroes, because it was a blast to make. Quincy and Sorter are by far my most used heroes, so of course I had to dedicate my first hero video to them. With update 39 being released a few hours ago, I'll take a look into it and see what topic I want to jump into next. But anyways, that's all I have to say. So I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.